Okay, assalamualaikum and a good morning. So, uh, I think we will start with the the new chapter because we are way. So, uh, uh, the last lecture, uh, essentially, we did not quite finish that. So, I'm going to do a recording. Uh, I'm supposed to do it by today, but uh, have not have gotten the time. To do it so I will do it uh, without having you as the audience and uh, I will post it up uh, shall not soon okay so today we're going to go into chapter 5 so I'm, I'm aware that the other class has already finished chapter 5 so we have to uh, essentially go very fast so so let me go again because I don't have notes I will do this on the whiteboard so I hope you can see this. So uh, today, uh, essentially, this chapter is part in is a revision to you. So you have done integrals before that, uh, mostly in a one-dimensional case. So, so let me just that, write that down. So here we are doing sort of multi-dimensional integrals. So you know how to do integrals for the case of 1D. So we're going to do a little bit of theory of uh, what happens when you have uh, more than one dimensions. Then, then you need to be able to uh, figure out uh, precisely what's, uh, what's needed. Okay. So let me go to my notes. Okay. Uh, In the previous case, uh, what we did uh, essentially when we do integrals, say uh, we are given say y equals to f of x. I have to be careful not to write too fast because uh, uh, of the lag. So uh, what happens in this particular case, you start plotting your y and then x. So you have this curve, for example. Then uh, the integral of, say, say this is a, this is b. Okay, so this is x equals to a, x equals to b. Then the the integral of a b uh, y dx. Okay, it's just simply the area under under the curve. Okay, so this is probably a, a way that you have seen this before uh, and what can be thought of uh, at this particular stage you can think of it as having the strips so maybe I just copy copy and paste the picture that you have here so uh, snapshot Paste it here. So, because uh, that there is a bit of a modern theory for this. So over here, what what's your integral is like a limit of the sums. What's that? Limit of uh, sum of area of rectangles okay so the in this particular case it looks like a vertical rectangle and uh, the sum is uh, over the range of x okay so this is uh, just to, to, to be uh, what you call to be a bit more precise on this is sometimes called the Riemann integral so I'm going to just mention another kind of integral which is a bit more modern than this is to think of 
instead of this vertical uh, uh, rectangles, there are uh, possible cases where one considered, uh, for example, over here, one consider the strips over here, the horizontal strips. And they use some of the uh, rectangles of the horizontal strips. And this gives you uh, what we call the Lebesgue integral. Now, uh, the range over here is the range of f of x. So, in other words, one needs to know, uh, in some ways, this is better in a way because you are given uh, the data well I mean the input is actually your uh, the the shape of the curve uh, given by this uh, function of x okay so it has some uh, no you can actually uh, use that to help you to do the integral for example and then the other thing is you're not limited to sort of uh, uh, what you call uh, having a uniform kind of strips you can have you know, for example in this part I can just simply use uh, uh, the, the big rectangle over here and then you no know, and then this simplifies a little bit uh, of the, the the sum that you want to do okay so in other words over here the sum is over uh, the horizontal rectangle. Okay, and the limit of that will be the integral. So that is just a little bit of theory, so that you, uh, you'll be uh, a bit more aware of you know, current theories of, of integrals. So today, what we're going to do is to generalize this a little bit. So, uh, yeah. So suppose you are doing. Uh, I have to make sure that I'm following the the book a little bit. Let me just go back here. So I'm going to copy this thing. So. Uh, over here is to be able to integrate a multivariable function so this in this case it's given by your z uh, as a function of x and y so you have uh, something like in this figure for example so let me cut and paste that Then uh, what we can do is uh, to define uh, the integral of f x y over some element, and this element is taken to be your dx dy. So here you can think of it as a infinitesimal version of this. Uh, square for example okay and you integrate f of x y will be a kind of a surface on top okay so and uh, essentially uh, what is being uh, written here is an integral over the area okay so here's the area element so this is d a over here and then you have a function on top of that. So what's uh, happening here, perhaps, uh, no, one has to have a, a little bit of, of uh, physical intuition. So uh, let me, um, uh, mathematicians do not care about dimensions. Uh, where is my cursor? Uh, but in physics, we do care about dimension, for example. In, in this particular case, uh, I can take the area element, the x, the y, 
and find out what the dimension of that. That is simply uh, the dimension of the x, which is length, okay, and dimension of the y, and that's length again. And then this is going to be uh, L squared, okay? So what happens over here, you already have a, a, a dimension L squared over here, and what is f of x, y? f of x, y is simply z, and the dimension of z, which is the dimension of f of x, y, and this is L. So what happens in that particular thing, you have a physical intuition what's going on inside this integral. Uh, by the way, are you, have you still, no, uh, how should I rephrase? Uh, do you still learn dimensional analysis? Anyone can help me with that? You haven't done that? Okay, so that, that's straight. Okay, uh, what, what is the idea of dimension? It's just uh, the idea of the kind of... Uh, Okay, and maybe I should do this a little bit so that, you know, because uh, some of the things you have to have some physical intuition. So uh, over here, for example, uh, the basic dimension in, in, in physics is going to be length and time. Okay, so you can have a, a, a quantity which has time dimension. Okay, or... Uh, a quantity, a physical quantity, which is a length dimension. So normally we think of, like just now, we know that x is supposed to represent a length. Okay, so y is present, representing another length. So basically when you multiply them, you get L squared. And you can also have, you know, integral over dt, then this is a dimension t. Okay, and uh, Okay, so these are in terms of uh, space and time. There are other dimensions, uh, which is uh, again uh, being uh, used in physics, okay, which is dimension of mass. Uh, what else? Uh, they have also created dimension of, uh, what do you call, what's the word for it? Uh, temperature, okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, which is uh, capital theta here. So this is dimension of temperature. So uh, one can analyze, uh, so uh, all physical quantities, okay, carry dimensions, mostly, okay. Uh, so one needs to be able to figure out uh, what are the dimensions? For example, uh, let me just, uh, here's another one example, you know, L cube is the dimension of a volume. Okay. So, uh, density, which we'll, we'll see later on, is what? Mass over volume. Okay. So, this has, so the dimension of uh, usually this is given by the symbol rho. The dimension rho is simply m l to the power minus 3. So one can figure out uh, this kind of dimensional analysis and uh, no, you can do manipulations with those and then figure out even your final answer whether it's right or wrong. It also tells us something else which you know, I think I mentioned this before but as suppose no uh there are no you have not quite seen this properly i suppose since you have not done not done dimensional analysis uh remember the idea of power series for example e to the x which is uh sorry 
set. Have you, uh, did I mention anything uh, about the dimension of X in this, uh, when I discussed the power series? Can anyone remember? Now, if, okay, uh, no, mathematicians do not care about this, okay, uh, physicists do, okay, if you make, if, the dimension this is the notation for dimension in okay, the square bracket thing if x carries the dimension of length see what's going to be hap happening over here uh, this will be uh, no this is uh, uh, dimensionless it's just a constant here this has dimension L this will be dimension L squared this will be dimension of L cube so imagining uh, what you have done here, you are adding, say, uh, the dimension of length, the dimension of area, and the dimension of volume together. So this is uh, uh, what I call nonsensical. Okay. One cannot add two quantities with different dimension. Can, can you add, for example, mass with length? Of course you can't. Okay doesn't make sense to, to do to do that so that's why you no know, all addition or you no know, you can multiply uh, okay, maybe I should say that addition or subtraction for that matter must have the terms must have the same dimensions The same dimensions. But for multiplication or division, for that matter, you can have different dimensions. So that's why you can have, for example, just now you have. Uh, The dimension of area over here. Okay. Not sure whether you you are seeing my my cursor here. Uh, the dimension of area over here can be multiplied with the dimension of L to give you the dimension of volume. Okay, so you can do multiplication with different dimensions. can multiply and do these operations for quantities with different dimension okay so in other words uh, one of the things that you should have I believe I've mentioned it but no probably this has not have escaped your attention uh, do this operation or quantities of different dimensions so one of the uh, significant thing that one should learn from this is that whenever you have an exponential or for that matter any function that uh, has a power series the variable that over uh, that that appears that should be dimensionless then when you add them up it's just an addition of dimensionless quantities okay so that's why for example uh, when you do say wave motion for example cos kx and you know that this is you know, in terms of power series this will be what uh, 1 minus uh, what was it uh, kx square or 2 factorial plus kx cube over 3 factorial sorry 4 sorry I'm doing 4 factorial and so on and so forth why is this okay because in in physics 
that's why you have this kx over here x carries the uh, the dimension of length and what's k what is k in physics anyone can tell me what do you call k Somebody, somebody must know, you're doing physics and you're not doing maths. Okay. This is sometimes called the wave number. And it's defined as k 2 pi over lambda. So dimension of k is 2 pi is just a number. And then lambda has the dimension of length. So dimension of k is L inverse. So in other words, Kx, which appears in the power series, has uh, dimension L to the zero, which is, well, okay, I mean, what does it mean by that is, it just says it's dimensionless. It doesn't carry any dimension. Okay, so that's why, no, uh, Perhaps this should have been done earlier, but but uh, I'm a, a bit surprised that it's no longer taught to you. So so again, uh, please do. Uh, no, you can always check your answers whether it uh, makes sense or not by doing dimensional analysis. So this uh, so-called uh, the different dimensions in physics. Actually, there are there are more. If you, you want to edit, it depends on what is assumed inside physics. But uh, here we include the temperature, for example, uh, because of uh, thermodynamics, essentially. Okay, and then uh, here is essentially, uh, you know, when you do any form of mechanics, you always have these three uh, dimensions. Okay, so okay, let me. Where was I? No, I've forgotten now. So we are doing this multidimensional integral over here. Okay. And essentially we know this uh, this integral is essentially uh, the it, what it does calculate is essentially the volume of this whole uh, almost cylinder kind of thing. So let's try to do this, uh, and uh, we are going to do this for much uh, more better uh, regular shape kind of uh, object. Let's be good. So I'm going to paste another picture here. So let me copy this. So what we're going to do is now uh, we we make it uh, this particular shape so that it's a bit more regular and you can actually do the integration uh, very well. Over here, there's a, 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 again, this is just like your Z equals to Fxy. Should I change color? Never mind. Uh, so uh, here your Z as a function of X and Y is just given in terms of this plane here, so this is the plane. Okay. So you can imagine this is a, a sort of plane cutting uh, uh, in that direction. So that gives you uh, z equals to 1 plus y. So this is a plane above. And then you're going to integrate this. Uh, because we want to find the volume of this particular solid. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, we uh, integrate Z. But now, uh, no, down at the bottom, we have another 
triangular shape. So let me just mention uh, what that is. So you have a triangular base. Uh, defined by sort of uh, y equals 0, x equals 0, and then you have that line here. So y equals 0 is that. Okay. x equals 0 is that. And then this line is 2x plus y equals to 2. So one of the uh, important problems okay, uh, when you do dimension, so not dimension, when you do um, multiple integrals over multiple dimensional uh, integrals over multiple dimensions is to figure out what limits that you you're supposed to have. For example, here, so always understand what limits to put. So this is the, this is essentially the basic problem of, of, of multiple integrals. Okay, you need to be able to know what you put for the limits. So over here, so what do we do? You have this uh, sort of, if you think this is uh, cutting above and this is cutting at the bottom, okay? So, uh, and you know that you're supposed by, by the previous uh, example that we have uh, sort of uh, alluded, alluded to that uh, the integral that you're supposed to have for the volume is given by z uh, times dA, which equals to function fxy here. Okay, maybe I should write that. So there will be a triple integral in really. it. So you have z, which is given by 1 plus y, and then you have dx dy. Okay. So how do we determine the, the limits for this integral? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, that is not quite right. I'll tell you why uh, later on. So this, let me run out of that triple integral here. It's only a, a double integral. Now, really, uh, it, it can be a triple integral, but the way we have written it is a double integral because we are integrating over dA. Uh, let me just put as an aside here. Volume in general is given by the triple integral of the volume element, which is given by the z dx dy. Okay. But here we are determining uh, what your z is supposed to be, so you're left with your dx dy. So that's why you have that only uh, double integral here. So let's again, uh, how to find uh, the limits over here. So here, you're supposed to do the limits for x and y. So one of the things that one does is essentially to look at, okay, where we're going to bring uh, x from where to where and y from where to where. Okay. So over here, what we're going to do is to do this slack thing. So the slack is, uh, let me do it a different. Uh, so this is the slack. Let me color it. So you have that slab of thickness uh, 
uh, slab of thickness dx or delta x for that matter. Okay. So what happens over here is essentially uh, your x is fixed between these two points over here. So we are not thinking about uh, the integral over x now. We are supposed to do this 1 plus y dy and then this will no your delta x will be the thickness and then you multiply that integral okay so uh, and that gives you the volume okay the volume of the slab okay so uh, how should I do this uh, uh, Thickness delta x and this volume is given by delta x times this integral. Okay, so uh, now you need to uh, figure out what's the limits for y. So the limits for y is if we look at the picture here, so it goes from uh, y equals 0. And it goes to some uh, arbitrary point on this line here. So you know it starts from y equals 0. Okay. And then it goes to an arbitrary point on, on, on this line, which is given by this equation. So if you look, uh, this equation tells us, okay, uh, your y will uh, go uh, on that line to be... 2 minus 2x because uh, x is not uh, being given here x is actually an arbitrary point somewhere here okay so uh, so you need to be able to say that okay I'm going to integrate from this y equals 0 until this point y over here and that is given by 2 minus 2x two yeah. Pardon? Sorry. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, okay, I'm going slow here. So, uh, so in other words, over here, uh, one can actually start to integrate this. So, I'm just going to give you an answer. So, this gives you 4 minus 6x plus 2x squared and why is x is there because x is an arbitrary point okay that gives you uh, this particular point here okay so uh, in order for for us to find the, the the volume of the whole thing what do we need we need to uh, let me push this thing up we need to integrate sum over this uh, delta x okay so here i'm running out of colors i suppose yeah we need to sum over delta x so in order to get your volume of the whole object Sorry, I'm doing this in a little bit more detail so that you understand what's what's going on in a multiple integral. Okay, so what do we do in this particular case? Then uh, from here, uh, what is this? Well, the way that we did it just now was to uh, take an arbitrary point of x here and do a strip. Okay, uh, so this will be an arbitrary x. So where does x start? X starts from zero here until this particular point here and this is given by x equals to I think from the book it should be x equals to 1 I think check yeah x equals to 1 so here is x equals to 1 and here is really x equals to uh, sorry y equals to Okay, so 
all the, all one needs now is to be able to integrate this so you get this answer so the volume now is integral over dx going from 0 to 1 of that 4 minus 6x plus 2x squared and this should give you the answer which is uh, let you calculate for yourself it's going to be 5 thirds okay now one could do this also differently if you want to okay so here what do we do so not over here we do uh, integral over uh, y first followed by integral of x okay so uh, well for this regular shape one could do it differently also so what can what one can do is okay uh, let me summarize the, the, the previous integral first so the volume is given by uh, to show that we do the integral y first so this is dy we integrate that and that goes from y equals 0 to 2 minus 2x and then followed by the integral of dx going from x equals 0 to x equals to 1 of what function the z okay so the other way, because of the regularity of the, the object, one could uh, do it uh, in the opposite way. One could also do it to be the volume. And then you do dx integral first of z, followed by the y integral uh, next. Okay. So uh, how do you determine the or the, the 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 limits again again uh, this goes uh, from zero okay and then it goes so let me go back to the picture so that you can actually see it so now we are doing it in this manner okay this manner rather than that manner so I'm picking out a arbitrary y point here so I need to be able to express your x in terms of y from this equation. Okay. So from there, if I just yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for how long just now? Uh, are you seeing the, the my screen now? Okay, okay. Are you seeing my screen together with my the the whole no? Are you seeing the screen of, of, of my computer? Yes or no? Okay, let, let me go back to the whiteboard. Can you see the whiteboard now? Okay, great. So, okay. Uh, again, what I'm saying is uh, our problem with multiple integrals to determine the limits here. Uh, you're taking an arbitrary y point so uh, we need to express your uh, the line uh, that gives you the triangular basis as now so this should be given by x equals to one half y and then uh, what about y well the y now goes from zero to two and then you can check this answer 
and sh you should get the same answer. See, what about this? Same answer. Okay, or game. Because I don't want to play that part. I don't want to play that part. Yeah, we can like good. Just yeah. So sorry about that. Uh, hopefully, when when you see the video, uh, you can you know look at the video. I think it should not be a problem. Now it's because of the internet connection rather than the uh, the recording itself. Okay. So let me just mention this before we stop. I think uh, why is uh, important for us to know taking which limits. Let me go to the pictures below. Let me, yeah. So let me take that picture. Where is my cursor? Okay. Now, it's always uh, what do you want to have? Okay, general uh, rule of thumb. Okay, so let me move up. General rule of thumb. Okay, the last integral must have uh, limits of numerical values okay so that determines which order is best for you to do your integral okay so over here for example is that picture just now? Enlarge it a little bit. Okay. So here, uh, you can see that you can see over here that the natural uh, uh, integral to do last is going to be the one that has this definite values a and b here and that correspond to your x-axis okay so here better do uh, dx integral last So uh, what about the y integral? Then the y integral will have to be uh, what defines the, the, the curve here. So let me just write it down so that. So in other words, over here, your integral f of x, y, dx, dy will have uh, uh, the last integral will be uh, x equals to a to x equals to b. Of dx, this one you do last, and then the the first integral because there are only two variables. Uh, the first integral here, then you'll do uh, the what is binding the curve here. Okay, previously the the one that that binds the curve uh, for the previous cases is y equals zero. Here, you know, y is essentially y equals to a function of x. Y one of x, y one of x, and here it's y two of x. So you go from down here, you go to the top here, and you can you can see that no, there are certain shapes that that allows you to do okay your x integral last because over here this is more or less fixed, and the same thing here. So you do always the dx integral for this particular shape. What's the problem if you want to do uh, the other way is that I'm going to do a sum over this kind of strips. Then uh, you have a problem of, okay, your, your limits of your y 
can be different at at different points. Okay, for for example, over here, over here is fine, but over here, then you can see that okay, this strip has this limit, which is different from this limit. Okay, so you have a problem of defining the limits for if you want to do this as the the last integral. So that's why in this particular case, it's always better to have your the x integral to be the last one, and then you can use your your whatever curves to be uh, integrated first. Then you get the answer, and then integrate over x last. Okay, so let's do the the other picture. This one is again. You can see now it's going to be different. Because why uh, the one that seems to be fixed uh, as numerical values are this uh, y equals to c. I do not know whether you can actually see this. Y equals to c and y equals to d. Y equals to c and y equals to d. Same thing here, same thing here. So in this particular case, it's best to do your y integral last. and your x integral first. So here is y equals to c, y equals to d, dy, and then what about the integral of dx? Then you look at what is the curve here, and what is the curve here. So here will be the, the curve will be what? The x1, y, and this will be x2, But there will be special cases, so this is the, the sort of uh, the different cases that you can have. The other cases that it doesn't matter because the, 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 the is uh, good enough for us to do either way, uh, either method first. Okay, so let me cut this. Oops. Uh, okay, so here it doesn't matter where. No, you can do either it, uh, your x integration first. Then I'll do this. Oops. We'll do this going from here to here, or I can go from say from here to here as well. So it doesn't matter. So it's all well defined. So the other one it will be uh, this case will be here to here. So in this in this 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 type of diagrams you can do uh, integral either way. Okay. So that is probably the thing that I want to just mention. I think because this is the trickier part of the integrals because. I'm pretty sure that you can all do integrals. Okay, so let me just finish off by uh, again uh, referring to that picture earlier. So that I can, uh, you know, let's see. Again, this picture there, just revisiting the problem. We know that uh, earlier we had uh, this integral as the volume come on 
So here uh, earlier we define the volume of the, the 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 shape okay to be the integral of uh, z uh, dx dy. But uh, as I said, one could have done this differently in a sense that okay. What do you do? The volume is given by the integral over the volume element. Is z dx dy. Okay. So your dx dy as, as before, but now if you do dz, dz, okay, so let me just do this. So your dx and dy as, as before, your dz will go from what? We'll go from z equals zero here to z equals to whatever uh, no uh, whatever height that you're supposed to take. Yeah. So that must be given by this uh, particular plane. So z will start from z equals zero to the uh, height of the plane which is given by what was it? Uh, one plus y. Okay, there's no function there. so it's a constant function one okay. so this is just a uh, constant one okay so that gives you again it gives you the same same uh, same uh, what you call uh, integral because when you integrate this then you get the x the y of uh, 1 plus y. Okay. Let's do another uh, thing which is uh, on top of what you have over here. Okay. So if I were asked to, uh, okay, let's, given that this is the, the volume, suppose I give you the, the density. So the density is as a function of x, y, z is given by x plus z. So can you actually calculate your mass? Well, your mass is going to be your uh, density. So let's do a, a, a differential of mass here. The, the differential of mass is given by the density times dx, dy, dz. So if I want to find the total mass, then what do I do? I do the triple integral. Okay. Your dx, dy, and your dz. But now I have to include, just now it's just uh, the constant function. Now you have to include your uh, density function, which is given by x plus. And uh, again, you need to do all the limit there. Okay. and if you integrate that that will give you uh, the mass equals to 2 okay. whatever unit that is so okay uh, I will stop there and I probably uh, try to see how we can speed up do you want to do a replacement lecture on Friday okay we can discuss this later so let me stop there for today and take your attendance uh, yeah. download that okay that's done okay I think that's all for today and then I will uh, I will try to do the, the, the video to complete the, the, the lecture that we had before and then upload it. So, uh, I will tell you when. Okay. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.